My best investment was to invest my time and money into ranking local SEO websites. Now, the websites that I work with and the businesses that stand behind these websites have brought in tens of thousands of dollars from the leads that came in through Google by ranking these websites to the top of the page on Google for multiple keywords that are relevant in the specific region we are targeting. I'm gonna show you seven or eight steps that I personally use to rank websites to the top of Google that are locally based. Now, also in those steps, I'm gonna talk about my secret sauce that I use to really stand outside of the competition and this is what drives me to the number one spot on the specific keywords terms I'm targeting. So stick around for those and please hit that bell icon to not miss any future videos that are coming out. Now you might say, Dennis, why are you creating more competition for yourself? Well, I'm gonna tell you this, 99% of people who are gonna watch this video are not going to take any action at all. And the 1% that is, if that's you, I applaud you. I hope you're gonna get a lot of value from this video. Right now, I firmly believe it's the best time to get into SEO. The reason I say that is because looking at trends like Gary Vaynerchuk, who's pulling people into social, into social and more into social, I think there's less people into, into SEO right now, which provides opportunity for people like you and me. So the first thing is first, you, you obviously need a website. Now, if you do not know how to set up a website, I'm gonna have a video in the description that's going to talk about how to set up a local website. The recommended hosting is at denisleskovitz.com forward slash hosting. Uh, one important thing when you're gonna be setting up the website, you need to understand that your name, address, and phone number needs to be correct. It needs to be correct during the setup of the website and on the actual website. So what I recommend is once you set up the website in your footer, have your name, address, and phone number for your business, have it be on the website and it needs to be correct. This is one of the most critical elements for Google to understand who you are, where your address is, and what your phone number is. The second point is you need locally optimized content. Now, what do I mean by locally optimized content? So let's say we're looking at the first page, the home page, right? The home page needs to be about a specific keyword, right? Don't try to make your home page all fancy and pretty. Focus on it ranking on a specific keyword. So for example, if you are a barber in Los Angeles and you want to rank for Barber Los Angeles, that is the main keyword that you should have on your homepage. And on that homepage, you need to have locally optimized content. What I, what I mean by that, you need to have about a 1000 word article that mentions Barber Los Angeles in the article a few times, not too many, but a few times for Google to understand and have that article talk about barber in Los Angeles and different things that barbers do and the services they provide in Los Angeles. One of the secret steps and one of the secret sauces that I use to rank websites fast is that you need to have a lot of content. And this is why I urge you to have specific pages for different keywords, all righty? We're gonna talk about this a little bit more. But uh, for, for now, you need to understand that Google will not rank skinny websites, right? Which is why a blog can actually make sense for you, which is why actually websites, they have blogs and some companies they have blog is, blogs is because it helps SEO. So consider having a blog just to beef up your website so that Google will rank you faster and better and higher, all right? Google looks at the size of your website as one of the ranking factors. And honestly, this is one of the, this this is my personal secret sauce because I see so many uh, local websites that have maybe five or six pages and that's it. And you know, sometimes they're gonna rank, but for the most part, if especially if you have competition, you need to have beefier, juicier website with unique original content on there. And you know, in addition to perhaps having a blog as well. Um, so in the next point, if competition is high, more, more content is needed, like I said, if you're targeting very high competition keywords, let's say you're targeting attorneys, dentists, etc., you're going to need a lot of content because Google needs to trust you that you are who you say you are. And so you will need content, right? 
Uh, when you have locally optimized content on your website, the on-page optimization for things like headings needs to be correct. So on your H1, you need to have your main keyword along with um, an, an additional mention of something else with the main keyboard. So for H1, what I recommend is doing something like uh, your main keyword. So um, Barbara Los Angeles uh, hyphen and your brand name. Cool barbers <laughs> with a Z, obviously. Um, H2, right, needs to have sub, it needs to talk about sub uh, points of H1, and then H3 can talk about sub points of H2, and then uh, having a, a P bracket over your general article will be just fine. But uh, split those up, so have like an H1 with some writing, an H2 with some writing, an H3 with some writing. Have You can have multiple H1s. Um, sorry, I mean have multiple uh, H2s, uh, keep one H1 so Google knows what uh, the page is about. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. Um, inside of the article, you want to have call to actions. So this is where conversion rates really skyrocket for me. It's because in my articles and in my in the middle of the content that I have on my pages, I have call to actions. So I have a specifically a phone number or a button that brings the people to a lead form for them to fill out so that I get a lead, right? If you don't know what I'm talking about or you want to know how you actually can design these things or you want to look at examples, I'm going to have another video in the description uh, that's going to increase your conversions dramatically. So be sure to check it out um, on, on exactly how to um, set up a call to actions in the middle of the article. Let's look at number three, which is siloed content. This is one of the other secret sauces that I use. I know it sounds a little cheesy with the secret sauces, but trust me, um, this stuff works, which is why I wanna show you this and I wanna tell you uh, about this. So what is siloed content? So siloed content basically means supporting content, right? So let's say on your homepage, you have the main keyword, Los Angeles Barber. That's the main keyword you're trying to target, right? Now, you're going to have a few pages that are under the main page that are talking about different things that a barber would be doing that are related to barbering. So let's say you're into men's haircuts as, a, as your barbershop. You are, you're a men's barbershop. So you would be talking about five trending Los Angeles haircuts, like for men, right? Why side cuts are cool in Los Angeles or in style in Los Angeles, right? Uh, bus cuts in Los Angeles. And you would have, basically you would have thousand word articles for every single one of those topics that you would then hyperlink. So you would hyperlink that article on these, uh, on these supporting pages. You would hyperlink it to the main article, right? So here's what I'm talking about. Let's say, uh, for example, your supporting page would be something like forward slash. Um, so you would have your homepage, right? XYZ.com. And then the supporting page would be something like forward slash a buzz cut. Right. And then on this buzz cut page, what you would want to do is you would want to in the middle of the article, right? So I hope you understand that the, this is the URL structure right there. So xyz.com forward slash buzzcut is talking about buzzcut in Los Angeles, right? So on this buzzcut page, you want to hyperlink somewhere in the article or just somewhere, you want to hyperlink it, you want to hyperlink something that points uh, this buzz cut page to the main Los Angeles Barber page. And then you want to do that for the rest of these supporting articles. And that's going to help Google understand what your website is about. And again, the more websites or the mo more pages that you have on your website, it builds authority and it builds the beefiness of your website. So Google is going to trust you more and it's going to rank you faster, right? So again, let's kind of review um, you want to have supporting content for your main keywords that is locally optimized, right? So notice bus cut in Los Angeles. It's not just talking about bus cuts. It's talking about bus cuts in Los Angeles. Again, increases site authority, helps Google understand what your site is about. 
And um, yeah, so just just one note on these articles, keep them high quality. Uh, perhaps people, folks are not gonna be reading them as much. However, you still might get ranked, but they might not be reading them. It's more for Google, but write it for a person, right? Write these articles as something that you would read. Um, just in case Google looks at your website, they want to see content that you, is actually interesting, right? Not like somebody in India with uh, no English wrote it, right? Or like a robot wrote it. Um, and <laughs> uh, I do apologize to any uh, Indians that might be watching. It might be any other country, right? Hope you understand that. Um, yeah, so you need siloed content to help support your main keywords. That's gonna help your rank so much better. Next, we're gonna talk about citations. So number four, citations. What are we talking about? Citations help Google understand, uh, again, you are, you are who you say you are. So citations are like uh, little votes for you across the web that tell Google that, yes, this is an actually a legitimate business, right? This is not some scam artist. This is actually a, a legitimate business and they have a profile on our website and uh, this is what they do. Right. So uh, the first thing when we're talking about citations is that we need to claim our Google My Business listing. Um, I have a ton of Google My Business videos on this channel, so go ahead and check them out. They talk about how to rank Google My Business so you're going to get a lot more calls and leads through having a Google My Business. But it's one of the most important things to have. So make sure you're going to cl you claim your Google My Business. Um, it's uh, google.com forward slash business, I believe. So go ahead and claim that and fill everything everything out. If you do not know how to set up your Google My Business, I'm gonna have a link in the description talking about uh, Google My Business and how to set it up so that it ranks. Next, we're gonna talk about structured citations. So structured citations are uh, business listings that actually specifically talk about your business, about your company, right, and what you do. So these are things like Yelp, uh, Apple Maps, Foursquare, Merchant Circle, Yellow Pages, et cetera, right? So these are just general business directories that you need to be listed on. Again, this helps Google understand who you are. Now we have geographic citations next, right? So this is something like if your business is in Los Angeles, you wanna focus on Los Angeles specific citations. So let's say uh, Los Angeles, I'm sure has a chamber of commerce. Almost any city has a chamber of commerce. Uh, oftentimes it's paid, however, it's oftentimes worth the link that you can get from them. Um, if you're strapped on a budget, I would not recommend it, but if you have some money you know, laying around that you wanna invest in your SEO strategy, this is a great investment opportunity to uh, pay the Chamber of Commerce some money to have them list your business. Again, it's not necessarily for uh, the leads that you're gonna get from the Chamber of Commerce, although you might get some leads, we're doing this for Google. Um, and then again, local business directories that are um, that are in Los Angeles, that are in the city that you're in. Next, industry-specific citations. If you're an attorney, findlaw.com, avo.com, um, for contractors, Angie's Lists, Home Advisor, et cetera. Um, so yeah, industry-specific um, citations, do research on the specific citations or on the specific companies that um, kind of do rankings and ratings and um, have your business listed on them. Next, uh, we're talking about data aggregators. Now these are, um, so these are aggregators that the big companies like TomTom Tom and Apple and Google, uh, that's what they use to kind of double check their data and more importantly, to get data from. Uh, so before even um, all of these Apple Maps and Google Maps were around, you had these data aggregator, aggregators that would just scrape the entire web for different types of data. And so now these are uh, these four data aggregators are the, the highly trusted ones and are the main ones in the industry. And they are known to provide uh, sort of the truth and to provide facts. So um, find, a, um, find a data aggregator submission service that can uh, submit your website and your company information to these data aggregators. It should be about $100, give or take. And yeah, get your business listed on these data aggregators. And then the last one we're gonna talk about is unstructured citations. Unstructured citations are your name, address, and phone number appearing across the web in an unstructured way. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Uh, let's say you have a YouTube channel, right? And um, 
on your YouTube channel in the description of your channel. You can just put your address, your phone number, and your website, and you can even, even potentially link out to your website from YouTube. Um, these are citations that are unstructured, but Google can still understand them, and it can still uh, give you another vote of confidence on those citations that are unstructured. It just needs to be um, correct that your NAP, your name, address, and phone, phone number need to be correct. And one of the biggest uh, turnoffs, so to speak, one of the biggest um, things for Google that Google hates and will actually just not rank your website because it's going to get confused is when your name, address, and phone number are wrong. So let's say you moved offices, you need to update all your name addresses and phone number across your citations, across your website, because Google is going to be confused if you if you do not have the correct name address and phone number and it's just not going to rank you. This is the unfortunate truth, especially if you're a new business. And then the last one is um, pro tip, have a brand resources page on your website and, li and link to your structure citations, your geographic citations, your social accounts, your unstructured citations. Link, so every time you create a citation, have a separate, separate page on your website um, with all of your citations on that page, with all of your social accounts on that page. So what happens is when you link out to these citations and to your socials, um, Google is going to be keeping these citations and social accounts in the index. The index is, um, it's kind of tricky to, to probably explain, but the best way I can do it is uh, imagine if you have, uh, if your brain is full at 100%, you need to dump some, some of the information out. And um, so Google actively dumps out information that it doesn't really use or is not active. It just dumps it out um, just somewhere, right? And in order to keep your website ranking, in order to keep your website relevant, you need to make sure your citation and your social accounts don't just die and get weeded out. So this is why it's important for your citations and socials to be indexed, which is why when you link to these uh, properties from your website, they're going to be actively in Google's index because your website is, um, is active, which means these citations are going to be active because the juice uh, from your website is going to flow to them. Um, it's, it's very important to keep things and citations, socials, and even your website in the Google index or else you will not rank. Number five, press releases. What are press releases? I'm sure you have seen somewhere um, this, this little snippet right here. As seen on ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, and a bunch of Telemundo, or <laughs> however you pronounce it, the, the different TV stations that are available, that uh, are out there. This is how you're able to say that um, you, you have been featured on these major broadcasting networks is because of what's called a press release. Uh, press releases, uh, basically, they... Um, you know, it, this is what press releases are what big companies do. So as a smaller company, you should be doing that as well uh, because um, for the following reasons, it helps Google trust your brand. If you're appearing nationwide on, on major broadcasting networks, Google is going to say, all right, this is a big brand so we can trust them. So we can actually rank them because we trust them so that our, our um, visitors on Google.com are going to, going to be able to trust them as well. And when you run a press release, what happens is um, a good press release, they're going to ask you which URL do you want to link to. And most of the time, it's going to be your homepage, uh, although not in 100% of the time. So what I mean by that, when you link, when you write, uh, when the press release, res release gets written for you, they're going to ask you wh which w um, page do you want to link to, and you're going to mention your homepage. Um, when you mention your homepage, keep in mind that all of the links that uh, are going to be on the web from these major uh, broadcasting networks, they're going to link to your homepage, which is going to give your homepage that link juice from these different um, broadcasting networks. This again helps your website to rank. Now, uh, one important kind of, again, hack slash secret sauce is if your website, if you're in a high competition market, 
and you, you want to rank for maybe different keywords, multiple keywords, or you just need more, more power, you can definitely run multiple press releases to your homepage, to an inner page on your website. You can even run press releases to your Google My Business page, right? All of these uh, different press releases are just going to give you more equity, more link juice around your brand. So Google is going to recognize uh, your, your brand. And uh, yeah, I mean, press releases are very powerful and they help give you just all of a sudden an instant boom of backlinks from these different broadcasting networks. And it really helps um, local websites to rank. Number six is backlinks. Now, this is the this is the favorite topic of a lot of different folks on the internet talking about SEO. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but backlinks definitely definitely improve your um, your rankings. That's just a fact. That's how it works. So, like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but uh, purchasing backlinks it's not necessarily allowed by Google Terms of Service. However, it it works. It works like gangbusters. So if you are going to purchase backlinks through things like guest posting make sure you purchase the highest quality backlinks you can possibly afford this is very important do not buy cheap backlinks they will destroy your website now cheap backlinks they they can rank you keep in mind however the methods and the the links that are going to be associated with your sites can be chinese random information they they can be unfortunately um just vice type of links and just links that are dirty that are cheap and that you have you do not want to be associated with your website and Google can actually penalize you for having bad links associated with your website so definitely invest your money into high quality backlinks uh, with uh, guest posting now uh, PBNs is kind of a gray area at this point right so we're not going to use cheap backlinks but we also you know we're looking at these guest posts and they're they're costing a lot of money so we're looking at pbms it seems like it's the it's the safe alternative although not quite um, pbns are good however the good pbns cost money as well they don't cost quite as much as guest posting but they do cost uh, a decent amount of money uh, obviously the best results are when you combine guest blogging uh, links backlinks with pbns it creates incredible results for your rankings for your website in general but they do cost money uh, so just just as a side note if you are going to invest into backlinks into PBNs make sure they're the highest quality you can afford and buy from reputable sources that you trust with reviews etc number seven social accounts last but not least we're going to talk about social accounts these social accounts are votes of confidence to Google that you are a legitimate business. Because let me ask you this, what do big corporations, what do legitimate business owners do, especially as Gary Vee is out there pounding the truth about the social medias, right? These big brands, they invest into social. They have a Facebook, they have a Twitter, they have an Instagram, they have la 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 la, right? you need to have social accounts because this is what everyone else is doing. If you are not doing that, Google is looking at you saying, all right, guys, look at this guy. He's not, he's not having social accounts. Everybody else has social, big brands have social, but you don't. You need to do things not like an SEO, but you need to focus on things that real brands do. And what do real brands do? They have social accounts. So uh, there's all different types of social accounts things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, you can, I mean, you can see Amazon here, right? There's ways to create social quote unquote accounts on, uh, on, um, Amazon, YouTube, Pinterest, Gravatar, et cetera. There's a lot of the, these different social accounts and you want to have a lot of, uh, you want to have, you know, as many of them as you possibly can that are relevant. Um, again, there are services for this that cost uh, from 60 to hundred dollars that you can order that will create uh, a, a lot of these hand-built social accounts. When you do order these services, make sure they're hand-built. Uh, it's actually quite the difference. Now, on these social accounts, you wanna make sure your name, address, and phone number is correct. It's so critical, it needs to be correct. If your name, address, and phone number get uh, intertwined 
and wrong google is just is just not going to rank you because it's going to get confused on your identity um so this is what we discussed mimic what real brands do make sure again your name address phone number is consistent across your social accounts and when you do make these social accounts try to have some interaction with them you know post um, a new page once in a while post an update once in a while link to your website once in a while you need to have some kind of activity going on there this helps um, this is what what is referred to as social signals to google this helps google um, see that you are a real brand and again as as i mentioned earlier during the citations module make sure to link your social accounts to your brand resources page on your website for indexing you want to make sure these social accounts especially if they're not really active they're just going to fall by the wayside and google is going to de-index them so if they are linked to your brand resources page on your local website google is going to keep them in the index uh, and keep them fresh this is very important keep social accounts in the index for google to continue to authorize that uh, vote of confidence on your website and to rank you higher all right folks this is it for now i just showed you the seven steps that i use to rank local websites from nothing to the top of the google for specific keywords in the local region um, i hope this video helps you if you follow these steps i pretty much almost guarantee that you're going to be able to see massive rankings in your local um, website please subscribe and hit the like button as it does help out the channel. And if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead and schedule your strategy session down there below at dennisleskovitz.com forward slash consult. I'm going to have a link in the description. That means you're going to be able to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to get on a call for an hour and we're going to look at your business specifically. And we're going to go over your business and I can talk to you about SEO lead generation, web design, uh, just business strategy, marketing strategy, etc. So go ahead and schedule your strategy session down there below. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me that like button, hit, hit it. <laughs> I'm already tired as you can tell. Um, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.